It has been a very exciting week for space news, let me tell you. Starship was fully stacked on the orbital launch mount, SpaceX launched NASA's PACE mission, and it looks like Blue Origin's new Glenn is about to go vertical. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. The crew of Axiom 3 returns to Earth after an unexpectedly extended stay aboard the ISS, NASA's Lucy mission performed its largest engine burn of its 12-year mission, and the Juno spacecraft made its second close flyby of Jupiter's moon Io. All of this and much, much more, let's begin with Starship updates. The biggest Starship story of the week began on Thursday. Flight 3 Super Heavy Booster 10 was rolled out through the doorway of the Mega Bay. You can see in this footage from Lab Fadre that its grid fins were temporarily set at an angle as it passed through the opening, before then being reset back to their horizontal positions. Following this, Booster 10 made what will hopefully be its final trip to the launch pad before it takes flight. As it arrived at the site, the launch tower's chopsticks were repositioned ready for a booster lift, and the ship quick disconnect arm was swung out of the way. The jaws of the chopsticks eventually closed around the booster as night fell, ready for a booster lift. NASA spaceflight got a great view of the lift, with the booster illuminated by spotlight. It was placed into the launch mount and released by the chopsticks. If mounting of the Super Heavy for Flight 3 wasn't exciting enough, things started looking like a full stack was imminent, as Ship 28 was lifted onto a transport stand in the rocket garden, and it then made its way down to the launch pad, where Starship Gazer was at the scene, capturing the lifting of the Starship over the course of several hours, after which it was stacked onto Booster 10, hopefully for one of the last times before launch. Remember, there will need to be at least one more D-Stack before flight, given that both vehicles will need to have their flight termination systems installed. I am cancelling my render, because it looks like the ships have uh, been D-Stacked. Uh, from the looks of things, they didn't fit together properly, and now there are several people kind of on top of the hot staging ring checking things out. So I guess this was a fit test. Yes, I would like to cancel the upload, thank you. Uh, this was a fit test, but the ships didn't really fit together properly. This has literally like just happened, so we don't really know much more. So that's uh, that's this amazing bit that I'm now gonna add to somewhere. Maybe, maybe like, maybe like here? Don't know yet. <laughs> We're still not clear on when launch will happen. For starters, the main hurdle SpaceX need to overcome right now is completing their investigation with the FAA into the launch mishap of Orbital Flight Test 2, before the case can be closed and launch license modified for Flight Test 3 and then approved. SpaceX are leading the investigation, but the latest news we have from the FAA is that they are still yet to submit all the required information for launch license issuance. It's likely that SpaceX are just not willing to rush things through, while they continue working on Stage Zero and the propellant farm. Speaking of the propellant farm though, it looks like work on this may be coming to a head. Lab Padre captured this footage of a cargo ship carrying the ninth and final cryogenic storage tank arriving at the port of Brownsville, where upon arrival, it'll be transported down to Starbase. This ended up happening on Wednesday, with arrival to the launch site via truck. Over the next few hours, it was offloaded onto a SpaceX self-propelled modular transporter and subsequently maneuvered into place. Other ongoing works at the launch pad and Stage 0 include the continued installation of shielding to the base of the tower, continued work on the new concrete walls by the launch pad, and further installation of more vertical steel reinforcement beams for the vertical storage tanks. The second launch tower for Starbase continues to grow. Over the week, we saw three vertical columns for one of the tower segments raised up, and then workers set about installing the horizontal beams to connect them all together. Not long after this, we then saw a fourth tower column lifted into place. Speaking of steel structures coming together, take a look at the progress with Star Factory. It's certainly growing at a very rapid pace. SpaceX's Falcon 9 had another busy week of launches. On Saturday, we were treated to a daytime launch of the rocket. It seems that lately these things have been launching a lot at night, so it's always great having a full daylight view. The Falcon 9 carried 22 Starlink V2 mini satellites to low Earth orbit from the Vandenberg Space Force Base, and following stage separation, the first stage booster landed on the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship in the Pacific Ocean, wrapping up its 14th overall flight. SpaceX later announced that with each launch of their second-generation Starlink satellites, they add 
at approximately 2 terabytes per second to Starlink's overall capacity, improving coverage and connecting more people from all around the world with high-speed internet. One of those people, ironically, turns out to be Jeff Bezos, founder of Blue Origin and hoping to get his own version of SpaceX's Starlink internet constellation up and running. Reddit user Turbine Lust spotted his yacht sporting some very recognizable Starlink receivers. Can't say I blame the guy though, Starlink is the best choice for maritime internet in most cases, but yeah, still kind of ironic. <laughs> Starlink wasn't the only SpaceX Falcon mission we saw last week. SpaceX also supported NASA's Plankton Aerosol Cloud Ocean Ecosystem mission, or just PACE, launching the satellite last Thursday from Launch Complex 40 at the Kennedy Space Center. This was this particular Falcon 9 booster's fourth flight overall, and following stage separation, it successfully landed at Landing Zone 1 at the Cape. The second stage continued on to carry the satellite to sun-synchronous orbit. PACE will help scientists to further our understanding of how carbon dioxide is exchanged between Earth's oceans and atmosphere, as well as measure key atmospheric variables relating to air quality and the climate, and monitor ocean health. One way it'll do this will be studying something called phytoplankton, which are tiny plants and algae which play a pivotal role in the marine food chain. The world's third all-private astronaut mission to the International Space Station came to a conclusion last week. The four-person crew of Axiom 3 boarded their SpaceX Dragon spacecraft along with over 250 kilograms of NASA hardware and data from experiments conducted during their stay aboard the station. Their departure was actually intended to be a few days earlier than it eventually took place, but it was delayed due to ongoing unfavourable weather off the coast of Florida. Things eventually calmed down by the middle of last week, and on the 7th of February, the Dragon spacecraft undocked from the station before making a successful re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, splashed down off the Florida coast, and then safe crew egress. Speaking of crewed International Space Station missions, the crew members for the next SpaceX Crew Dragon mission have been assigned. The team will be led by Mission Commander NASA astronaut Zena Cardman, who will be joined by two fellow NASA astronauts, Pilot Nick Haig and Mission Specialist Stephanie Wilson. The fourth crew member will be Mission Specialist Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov. The launch of Crew 9 is expected to take place no earlier than August from the Kennedy Space Center. Back at Cape Canaveral, oh my goodness, did my eyes deceive me! Is that a new Glenn first stage being rolled out to Blue Origin's launch mount at Launch Complex 36? This photo was captured by NASA Spaceflight's Max Evans and is a very exciting step towards seeing new Glenn enter service. This stage is their new Glenn first stage Pathfinder, which means this is more of a test of the ground infrastructure than the rocket itself, but still, huge progress for Blue Origin here. NASA's Lucy mission performed its largest engine burn of its 12-year mission last week. The Lucy spacecraft is heading out to the never-before-explored Jupiter Trojan asteroid, which it will reach by performing a combination of engine burns and gravity assists. This latest burn was only its second, but as mentioned, it was its largest planned, helping to set the spacecraft ready for its second Earth gravity assist, which should happen this December. Another NASA mission, Juno, also hit a milestone. The spacecraft made its second ever close flyby of Jupiter's moon Io, with its previous one taking place in late December 2023. This time the pass took the spacecraft just 1,500 kilometers above the moon's surface. For Americans watching, that's about the same as 800,000 Joe Bidens. That's a lot of Joes. Juno's two Io flybys were designed to help provide NASA scientists with further insight into how the Moon's volcanic system works, and to investigate the possibility of a global magma ocean beneath its rocky surface. Laun Aerospace had another busy week. I decided to set about recreating one of the more interesting space shuttle concepts that never materialized, the Soviet Energia 2, the spiritual successor to the Buran, which would have been fully reusable. If this video sounds interesting to you, then it should now be one of the clickable cards on screen. And on the left, you can see my Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members who really, really do make all of this content possible. I've mentioned on Twitter X. that this series doesn't really get that many views, and the cost of licensing all this footage is actually greater than the amount of money that this show makes. So really, this is a completely Patreon-supported show at this point. So you guys have my deepest gratitude for your continued support.